Hello everyone, Mike here. I've got the MacBook Pro M1 Max and I would like to share my thoughts about it. As an iOS developer, I will focus on a typical day-to-day -day workflow rather than just running benchmarks. On paper, M1 Pro and Max are much faster than M1. In some of the benchmarks, I believe it was around 40%. But benchmarks uh, is one thing, and when you are working, it is a completely different story. That's why, besides just checking build times in Xcode, I will also try some developer tools that I use daily, like SwiftyMocky, Twist, and Fastlane. So I could compare the difference between the M1 and the M1 Max, in case if you are wondering which one to buy. Let's get started. I have the same project on three different machines. MacBook Pro M1 Max with 32GB of RAM, Mac Mini M1 with 16GB, and good old MacBook Intel i5 with 16GB memory. Of course, this Intel i5 is uh, much slower and it is here just to show how big the difference is between Intel and M1. Also, please keep in mind that Intel MacBook is still on the Big Sur with Xcode 12.5. So let's start with Intel and then Mac Mini and M1 Max. First build will be a build after the clean. Next one will be an incremental build as you are not cleaning your project after each code change or compilation. So this will be a more real life scenario. MacBook Pro M1 Max finished the build in around 20 seconds. M1 Mac Mini finished it in around 24 seconds, so it's almost 4 seconds difference, not that bad for Mac Mini. It took 63 seconds to build on Intel. Now let's check an incremental build. If I will just build it once again, it takes around 1.5 seconds to build, which is almost identical to M1 Mac Mini. In this project, because of how the project is structured, we are using micro features architecture. A lot of frameworks depend on each other. When I will change one file and start the build, Excel will have to rebuild more files and the build time will increase. It took 3.6 seconds to build on M1 Max and around 4 seconds on Mini. Please notice how Xcode started indexing. I'm not sure what's going on here. It started with the new Xcode 13. On 12, it was not behaving like this. In general, Xcode on the M1 Max feels almost the same as on M1. I don't work with a huge storyboard, so it was hard for me to throw anything that Xcode could not handle on M1. I think that I only found one thing when Xcode was more smooth and responsive on M1 Max. I use SwiftyMocky to generate mock objects and it generates this gigantic almost 30,000 lines of code and when I will open this file by accident it lags a little bit on the M1. M1 Max handled it uh, without any issues. I have also checked the old iOS 13.7 simulator build. If you don't remember, this is still on x86, so it has to run through Rosetta. It was a little more smooth on the M1 Max. The whole system was more responsive than on M1. I think that this is because of the memory. 32 gigabytes gives you a lot more room for all of the files. As I mentioned before, for testing, I use mock objects generated by SwiftyMocky. If you haven't heard about it, I highly recommend it to give it a try. On the M1 Max, it took around 3.7 seconds to generate, which was almost the same as on the M1. To generate Excel project file and manage all of the frameworks, I use Twist. It is literally <laughs> Xcode on steroids. You are defining your project using Swift, which is super convenient. On the M1 Max, it generates the project in around 7.5 seconds. On the M1, it takes around 10 seconds. Next one is Fastlane. I think that this one does not require an introduction. I use it mostly on the CI, but sometimes 
it happens that I run all of the test suite locally. In this project, it takes around eight minutes to run all of the tests using Fastlane. Surprisingly, M1 Max did it slower than M1. Uh, it's not that big difference though. Uh, it was around 33 seconds. I wanted to check how this MacBook will perform on a different project. Uh, I chose the Expenso app. It's open source on GitHub. Let's start with file indexing. It's a little hard to measure and get an ambiguous result, but more or less on the M1 Max, it took around 42 seconds to index all of the files, while on the M1 Mac Mini, it was around 57 seconds. This project takes a little more time to build, and I also wanted to check how fast it will take to build on a device. For the M1 Max, it was around 48 seconds for a clean build, and on M1 Mini, it was around 55 seconds. For the incremental build, it was almost the same, around 4 seconds for both machines, with a slight advantage for the M1 Max. Of course, I could not resist to run the Blackmagic disk speed test. SSD here is extremely fast, and I only have 500GB. The bigger models are even faster. During the day-to-day -day work, the difference between the new MacBook with M1 Max and Mac Mini with M1 was surprisingly not that big. Of course, I'm talking about the performance. I was using this machine on my desk connected to an external display, mouse and keyboard. If you are still using Intel Mac, uh, you are losing a lot. I know that not all of you can switch to M1. Uh, I still have a lot of issues with the third-party binary dependencies and I still need to keep my Intel MacBook Pro. New MacBooks are definitely the best Macs yet. If you are thinking about getting one and wondering if it's a good choice, it is, but it also depends. Is it worth to get the M1 Pro Max or maybe you should get the M1? When you are doing a typical tasks in Xcode, editing code, compiling, running a simulator, the performance difference is not that significant. I didn't saw that big of a difference between M1 Max and M1. Of course, even a couple of seconds when you will add them up during the longer period of time can't be ignored. But I don't think that this should be the biggest factor when choosing your next Mac. We are one year into the transition and next year new Macs will be released. And I think that you should ask yourself a question. How do I use and work on my Mac? In terms of the raw power, M1 should still be good enough for most of the iOS developers. If a couple of seconds makes a difference to you, go with M1 Pro. When you are working with 3D graphics, AR or ML, M1 Max may be a better option. Also keep in mind that only the M1 Max can support up to 4 displays and 64GB of memory. For now, 16GB is mostly enough. I didn't saw much of a difference uh, doing a typical tasks comparing to M1 Max with 32GB. But if you want to future-proof your Mac and you plan to keep it for many, many years to come, going with more than 16 gigabytes is actually a good idea. So yeah, please keep in mind that this is just my perspective and your needs and the way you work may be different. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider subscribing for more iOS development related videos. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Wait, what?